that it was due to an impact. So other people immediately objected. They said, oh, no, no, no. How do you know there are not iridium anomalies everywhere? I mean, you got one there, but how do you know there isn't one there and one around there? Maybe they're just real common. They don't have anything to do with impacts. And we said, well, you know, it's hard work and it's real expensive to make these measurements. If this is all we could afford. And they said, well, then we won't believe you. And so we realized that we were going to have to tell, have to make all of these iridium measurements over a long distance of this section in order to see whether they were common or whether this was unique. So my father got busy, and the things that physicists love to do, I would hate this, but he loved it, was to make a, um, a special iridium coincidence counter that made it possible to measure lots of re samples real fast, you know. He invented it, Frank Asaro built it, we were ready, we were going to process hundreds of samples a week and we'd just be able to run through this whole thing. But what happened then was, then the rate limiting step was that we needed the samples, okay? So what do you do in a case like that? You need a whole lot of samples. You need a thousand samples. What do you do? Grad students. Grad students. <laughs> <laughs> So fortunately, there was a grad student handy whose name was Alessandro Montanari. So we sent him over here and we had planned, you know, a, a sample every this far apart for uh, 10, 20 meters down this thing. And Sandro came over here and it was summertime. Well, you can see how this canyon is built. There's no shade and it works like a reflector oven, you know, the, and it, it was, yeah, it was this, it was absolutely petrifyingly hot in this, and that was the hottest, hottest summer on record. Summer on record. <laughs> it had to be, right? But it actually was, or at least one of the hottest. And Sandro is over here, and he's drilling these things, and, and Sandro, as you can tell, is extremely tough. But after about a week of this stuff, even Sandro was just <laughs> utterly exhausted. He was out here. Finally, at some point, he was sitting up against the side of the, uh, of the canyon someplace like this, in a, you know, too tired even to get out of the, the sun, in a great <laughs> waterfall of sweat. And he finally said, I can't do it. It's, really, it's not humanly possible. <laughs> and he, he convinced himself that he really could problem was, how is he going to tell me? <laughs> because I was back in Berkeley where the fog was coming through the Golden Gate and it was like 60 degrees and how could he possibly tell me? No. And so he's sitting there in this sort of semi-feverish dilemma and uh, trying to figure out what to do and his brain is working very well and he gradually realized that one of his fingers was touching something that didn't feel like a rock. Like something metal. So, you know, I Lee picked up this thing and it was a washer, you know, like a metal washer from something or other. And he looked at it and, you know, and brushed a little. That's not a washer, it's a ring. And he looked at it and that was getting interesting. He starts brushing he stuff licked off, it. <laughs> licked it, lick and look, and it was a gold ring. It was a wedding ring. And he looked at it more closely. He said, wait a minute. No, that's not a wedding ring. Not a gold wedding ring. It was an iron wedding ring with a partially worn off gold plating. And suddenly Sandro knew what it was. Because he was not old enough to remember this. He was born after the Second World War. But he'd heard the stories about how Mussolini would go out to raise money and they'd come into a town like Gubbio and they'd have this great, you know about that Roberto, don't you? Yeah. They'd have this great ceremony and they would invite the women to come and, and they would have this great ceremony in which they would take off their gold ring and they would present it on the altar of Mother Italy and in return they would be given this iron wedding ring with a, a gold coating on it and Sandra looked at it now he's really interested you see how he gets interested so he's looking inside and he brushes it off he can, yeah there it is and he could read the fascist motto <laughs> and the fascist motto said credere obedire combattere it said believe obey fight <laughs>
That's on the set. That's, That's got to be a message for that. <laughs> and so the trumpet sounded in the car Sandra stood up and brushed off his head. And he went back to work and he finished the job. <laughs> I had that ring for a long time in, in, in my notebook, <laughs> and then I lost it. But the nice thing when I lose, lost it is that I lost it here. Oh. Lost it here. Look around. You were in the fourth circle, probably somebody else, a geologist in the Futurozoic. When they need that message again, it will appear. <laughs>